This video is sponsored by NordVPN. More details at the end. Looking for a new roommate is always a daunting task. Even though you interview and take the time to get to know that person, you don't truly find out who they are until you start living with them. I had begun searching for a roommate after I decided to leave my current residency. I was contacted a couple of hours after placing an ad on the Facebook marketplace. The message read, Hey Chris, I'll be moving out of my current apartment this August and I'm looking to room with someone new, as my roommates are moving to California this year. I'm 27 and I'm currently going to school. When I'm not at school, I enjoy hiking and watching movies. I also apprentice at a taxidermy shop on the days I don't have class. Hope that's not weird. It's always been a fun hobby of mine. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing back from you. Have a great day, Lunaire. My first and most obvious reaction after reading the message was to check her profile. She was of medium height, had long, messy blonde hair and green eyes. In her profile picture, I saw her standing with a man and a woman shoulder to shoulder. They each adorned goofy grins and held up peace signs. Under the photo, the caption read, Love my roommates. I smiled to myself and decided to send her a message back. The sun beat down on us as we hoisted various objects to the second floor of our new apartment. It took us a couple days to get everything out of the moving trucks and into our new place, but as soon as we did, a wave of relief washed over our sweat-drenched and sore bodies. After a couple more hours of rearranging, we each grabbed a beer from the fridge and sat on the porch. We reminisced about old 90s cartoons and what video games we obsessed over as kids, and as the sun started to set, I truly felt relaxed and confident that things were going to work out. A week later, I started a new job for a construction company that was owned by a good friend of mine. As I was getting ready, I heard the front door swing open. I walked into the living room to see Lunaire and her friend David sliding in a large box. What you got there? I asked. Through a strained grunt, she replied. I bought a freezer to store some of the animals I'm planning on using in my taxidermy work. I hope that's alright. I was obviously hesitant at first, as there was no mention of this happening in the first place, but I eventually accepted and returned to my room to continue getting ready for work. I came home at around 9pm after having a couple of beers with friends and noticed that the freezer was nestled snugly in the lower part of the pantry. A low hum could be heard reverberating off of the inner walls. I was curious to see what was inside, but didn't want to intrude on Lunaire's business so I went into my room and changed into more comfortable clothing. After changing, I came back out into the kitchen and started making a sandwich. I opened the fridge and grabbed what I needed. As I turned around, I stubbed my toe on the edge of the island countertop and let out a long, exasperated grunt. Through my frustration, I slammed the fridge door shut and checked my toe to see if there was any bleeding. As I raised my head back up, I was greeted by a shadowy figure. Lunaire was standing in the doorway leading to her room. The darkness behind her almost seemed to envelop her. Is everything okay? She said in a deadpan tone. Shit, yeah, I'm sorry. I just slammed my toe into the corner of the countertop as I was making a sandwich. I hope I didn't wake you. It's fine. She said in the same deflated tone as before. She then turned around and walked back into the darkness of her room. I could tell that she was pissed, so I quietly made my sandwich and retreated back to my room as well, only hearing the low hum from the freezer as I closed my door. I had the next day off so I was able to sleep in a little longer than usual. When I finally emerged from my room, I walked into the kitchen to make breakfast. As I opened the refrigerator, I noticed that the light wasn't turning on and there was a lack of cold air escaping from inside. I turned around and flipped the light switch to confirm my suspicion. Sure enough, the power was out. Damn it, I muttered under my breath. I walked over to Lunaire's room and knocked on her door to tell her about the power outage if she didn't already know, but there was no answer. I then remembered that she had classes that day and probably wasn't home. I walked back to the kitchen and past the pantry. As I did, I slipped on the floor but was able to catch myself on the countertop. What the? I angrily exclaimed as I looked down at the floor trying to figure out what I had slipped on. It was blood. 
and it started to leak from the corner of the freezer and pool onto the floor. I quickly tried to open the freezer to find out the cause of the viscous liquid, but then I noticed that it had a padlock attached to it. I don't remember seeing that before. I ran out to my car and grabbed my toolbox from the back seat. I approached the freezer and set my tools down on the nearby countertop. I then pulled out a small pair of bolt cutters and snapped through the metal of the padlock. It fell to the ground with a large thud. I creaked open the top of the freezer and was greeted with a putrid stench that permeated my nostrils. I quickly pinched my nose and walked away gagging in response. I guess I should have realized that was going to happen, I muttered to myself in between gags. After gaining my composure, I grabbed some gloves from under the sink and started taking inventory. I could see a couple of dead birds and plastic bags wedged into the corners of the freezer. I took each bag out and set them in the trash can nearby. That's when I noticed that the blood was coming from the corner of the larger black bag. I don't know why, but I decided to open the top of the bag and peer inside. I was greeted by large, milky white eyes, a swollen black tongue surrounded by cracked and bloated lips, and the matted hair of a human head. I swiftly dropped the bag and fell backwards onto the floor. My breathing had ceased to exist and I grabbed the trash can next to me and expelled my disgust into it. I then ran out the door, got into my car, and called the police. As I sat in the interrogation room with a blanket over my shoulders, I couldn't help but think about the face I'd seen. It looked so familiar. That's when it finally hit me. I pulled out my phone and looked at Lunaire's profile picture. It was her old roommate. The one she said was moving to California. When the detective entered the room, she started the questioning process, asking me if I started noticing any weird behavioral occurrences around the apartment. Yeah, I stubbed my toe the other day and she creepily stood in the doorway. It seemed like she was pissed, but for some reason I had a strange feeling like she was concerned about something. That's when I connected the dots. She didn't come out into the kitchen because she heard me stub my toe. She came out into the kitchen because she thought I slammed the freezer instead of the fridge. A cold sweat started to form on my forehead as my surroundings became blurred. I could hear a low whine slowly starting to cover up the words of concern from the detective. As my vision started to clear, I could see another officer enter the room and whisper something into her ear as he handed her a piece of paper. Do you have somewhere you could stay at? She asked. I mean, I was planning on staying with my parents. They live about 30 minutes outside of town. Okay, she paused. Listen, I don't want to worry you, but we found this picture inside of your apartment. She slid the piece of paper across the table, and I immediately felt like someone kicked me in the chest. The head of Lunaire's other roommate sat on the chair. In the background, scrawled on the wall in blood, read, Love my roommates. All of them. Does this ever happen to you? You find out about an awesome show. So you grab your snacks, click on the video, and then... Then you need NordVPN. If you haven't heard of NordVPN, you must be pretty new on YouTube, and that's okay. NordVPN is a virtual private network with over 5,000 servers all around the world. So no matter what you want to stream, NordVPN has you covered. Using NordVPN will stop your internet provider from snooping on what you download and stream by masking what sites you're connected to. It can also give you access to cheaper games and subscriptions available in different regions. You can connect up to six devices at the same time, so one account can cover all of your devices. If you're not happy with the service, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so try NordVPN today. Get 70% off a three-year plan with one month for free at nordvpn.com llama or use code llama. Plus, Nord will be giving surprise gifts to their customers as they are celebrating their 8th birthday this month. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. 
If you would like to support the channel, check out the merch link in the video description.